Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at BT14 and BT14 offers us lots of new and powerful tools to be able to build and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck I'm going to be taking a look at is going to be uh, one of my personal favorite that I'm looking forward to playing the most and that's going to be the Lugamon deck. So as far as who Lugamon is, Lugamon is a new Digimon that was introduced in the Seeker's web novel. It's uh, starting the Sons of Chaos uh, tribe, which is uh, the faction that he's uh, belonging to currently in the web novel, as well as fitting inside of the Dark Animals tribe as well. In terms of what the deck is actually doing and its overall goal and gameplay, it's very similar to Metal Gururumon decks, uh, where you're just going to be attacking multiple times, and you're going to be attacking attacking ideally with security attack plus to be able to push uh, the pressure and aggression as quickly as you possibly can. The deck being inside of purple gives it some extra benefits where it also has the ability to swarm uh, from the grave uh, by being able to revive uh, some of its low level Digimon that it could then use for more aggression on top of the fact that because it's in purple the interaction that we're going to be uh, doing to try to fill up our trash with the cards that we want is going to be drawing and discard to help set itself up. The biggest weakness of the deck is it's a general lack of protection, so attacking into the security sometimes could be a little bit risky depending on what the matchup is and what security threats you could potentially be running into. But with all that said and done, let's just dive right into the deck profile and see what this deck is doing. Starting off with the Digitamas, I'm only going to be running 4 copies of Baumon. Baumon is uh, the dedicated egg for the deck, which is why we don't need a fifth egg at all. And what this card is doing is allowing us to be able to uh, Digivolve uh, from our trash when we're going to be discarding our Digimon. So that way it allows us to be able to line up our evolutions a little bit more cleanly than we normally would. Next on to the level 3s, I'm running a pretty interesting level 3 package and you could kind of be a little bit flexible with what your level 3s are doing. So the main level 3 of the deck in the card that you can't change is going to be the 4 copies of the BT14 Lugamon. This is a really important card because we are going to be interacting with AG, which is going to help make sure that the deck is going to be running as best as it possibly can. And the fact that we could use this Lugamon at the start of our main phase to be able to put our AGs from our trash or our hand underneath our Digimon's Digivolution source and be able to gain memory for that is what's allowing us to be able to set up super easily and have easy access at our tamer. Then it also has a nice inheritable ability that's just allowing us to generate some extra memory to make our plays even more efficient when we're going to be playing our dark animal cards, which is going to come into play when it comes to our higher level Digimon. Then as far as the other level fours of the deck, I'm going to be running four copies of the starter deck Gabumon. So this is pretty decent just because it helps us gain some extra memory while sitting passively on the field. But the main pull and why I'm running this card is because we want to draw and discard cards, which its inheritable ability lets us do very easily. Then I'm going to be running two copies of Psychmon as the deck's dedicated floodgate, so that way it turns off some of the opponent's potential play lines. And then the last rookie of the deck is going to be two copies of Drakmon, just because we are already synergizing and interacting with uh, dark animals, so this is going to be a good uh, way to be able to search out our dark animals while having an extra way to be able to digivolve into our dark animals from our trash, and the inheritable ability is not limited to once per turn, making it have some pretty decent synergy uh, with uh, what the deck is capable of. Next, on to the level 4s, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Lugermon. So, Lugermon is a pretty decent card. We're not really going to be utilizing its when attacking ability uh, that often, just because we don't need to. But the fact that we do get to uh, draw a card and discard a card, then if it has AG in its Digivolution source, then we get to gain 1 memory is really, really nice. Especially if we are planning on Digivolving from the trash, this could help uh, set up that Digivolution. Then uh, the most important part of the card is its inheritable ability, doing the exact same thing as the Lugamon, allowing us to be able to gain some extra memory for playing out our other dark animals, so, so that way it makes our higher stages even more efficient to use. 
Then I'm going to be running four copies of Fangmon. So this is another new dark animal card from BT14. And it has a pretty decent amount of flexibility on what we could do with him. Just because his on play and when digivolving ability is pretty decent. And the ability we're gaining for using this card is returning a purple Digimon card with dark animal in its trait from our trash to our hand. And then we get to trash one card from our hand. So that way it's acting as a nice way to be able to retrieve the parts and pieces that we need while setting up the grave with what we want. And then the last champion of the deck is going to be two copies of Black Gatomon. So this is the BT8 version of Black Gatomon. It is a dark animal, so it is fitting on a tribe with what the rest of the deck is playing around with. And uh, we're utilizing this card mostly just because it's a level 4 we could revive that has the rush ability so we can make even more aggressive pushes thanks to this card. Then when it comes to the level 5s, uh, I'm going to be running four copies of Soul Lugarmon. So Soul Lugarmon is a absolutely powerhouse of a card, and what's really starting the combo train going in terms of uh, where the overall damage output is going to be coming from. So uh, this has a nice wind digivolving ability to be able to play out a level 3 Dark Animal or Sons of Chaos uh, traded card from our trash for free. Then if we have AG in its uh, digivolution source, we get to add 1 to the level chosen by this effect. So just by utilizing this card alone, moving out our level 4, going into our level 5, if we have AG underneath, then uh, it's going to allow us to be able to uh, revive a level 4 Digimon, which is pretty decent just because as we already saw, our level 4s have some pretty decent usability. Then um, this also has a nice when attacking ability where we get to trash one card from our hand to be able to gain a memory. So uh, it just allows us to be even more memory efficient, especially since we know, thanks to our egg, whatever we discard, we could digivolve into right away. Then it also has a nice inheritable ability for when we play a uh, Digimon with Dark Animal or Sons of Chaos in their traits. Then we get to unsuspend this Digimon, allowing us to even be able to multi-attack. So we really want to uh, have AG underneath uh, our Digimon, Digivolve into this card, revive a body, swing with this card, discard our level 6, uh, use the egg to Digivolve into our level 6, and then uh, unsuspend our level 6 uh, after we Digivolve into it based on everything that the deck is trying to do. Then I'm also going to be running four copies of Helugamon. So Helugamon is a pretty decent card. We're most likely not going to be digivolving past Helugamon if we're going to be using it, just because it has a ability that we actually want to trigger with its on delete ability, where we get to trash up to three cards with Dark Animal or Sons of Chaos from our hand, then delete one of the opponent's level three or lower, and then for each card we trashed utilizing this effect, we get to add one to the maximum level that we can choose from, so that way it could delete up to to a level 6 on a level 5, which is pretty decent in terms of removal potential. Then uh, this card also can delete himself uh, to be able to trigger his on delete ability, where at the end of your turn, we get to delete this Digimon to be able to draw two cards and return one Lugamon from our trash uh, back into our hand, so that way we could use our main level 3 again. And then the last uh, level 5 of the deck is going to be one copy of Chimeramon. If you wanted to, you could kind of go down a Helugamon if you want to run another copy of Chimeramon. It doesn't necessarily matter, just because Chimeramon, we necessarily can't search or dig out of the deck, but he's still just an absolutely insane card for when we do have him, just because he could DNA Digivolve off of two level 4s for 0. We just care about getting an extra swing with this card, and then when it comes to the level 6, I'm only going to be running 4 copies of Fenry Lugamon. So Fenry Lugamon is what is going to be the driving force behind how the deck wants to play because this is going to be the dedicated top end. Nothing else does exactly what we want it, so therefore we don't need anything else other than this card because of how good and strong he is. So he has a nice when digivolving ability where we basically get to uh, revive a level 4 or lower Dark Animal or Sons of Chaos traded Digimon from our trash for free. Then if our main tamer is going to be underneath him, then we get to add 2 to the number of cards that we could play off of this effect. 
So we could potentially revive a whole bunch of extra bodies all at once just by digivolving up into this Digimon, which is already really strong because uh, he has a nice when attacking ability where we get to delete one of the opponent's level 3 or lower Digimon, unsuspend this Digimon, and then for each Digimon we have in play, we get to add one to the maximum level of what the effect it can choose from. So the wider our field, the stronger the removal this card has, which he's setting up himself thanks to his when digivolving ability. Then the crazy part is his last part of the ability, where during your turn, the end of turn condition on the opponent is having three or more memory, so even when you go past to zero, it's still technically your turn to be able to make more powerful plays, and that's the core strength of this card, is using him in combination with Soul Lugamon and the whole Lugamon stack, so that way you could have a super efficient and effective level 6 Digimon. And then when it comes to the level 7s, I'm only going to be running one level 7, and that's going to be one copy of Death Exmon. So Death Exmon, you're not necessarily trying to digivolve up into. You could if you want. He's mostly in here just as a tech card to be able to counteract uh, some of the opponent's go-wide strategies themselves, whether they're trying to play a whole bunch of tamers or a whole bunch of Digimon. And then when it comes to the tamers, I'm only going to be running two different tamers. The first one is going to be the main tamer of the deck, which is going to be AG himself, and this is what's making the Lugamon deck as insane as it possibly can be. Just because say, he does have an inheritable ability, where if this Digimon is a Dark Animal or Sons of Chaos Digimon, then it gains the Alliance and Blocker ability. We're most likely not going to be utilizing the Blocker ability a whole lot, but the fact that it gives our Digimon Alliance is super relevant and important, especially since we're spawning a whole bunch of extra bodies, in case those extra bodies don't have rush then we could use alliance to be able to suspend them to be able to increase uh, our overall damage output and make our security tax a little bit safer by sharing its dp with the digimon we're utilizing the alliance effect with then it has the end of turn ability uh, where we get a play an ag from this digimon's digivolution source uh, for free so that way we could split him apart and be able to put him back in later because of the main ability of mind link where one of our digimon uh, with dark animal or Sons of Chaos and his traits can uh, put this card into its uh, inheritable source while also uh, having uh, the ability at the start of our main where if the opponent has a Digimon in play we get to gain a memory so that way we could gain the memory before we mind link our Digimon underneath our Digimon to give it all of those inheritables making him just a really strong tamer for how the deck wants to play. And then the only other tamer that I'm going to be running is going to be four copies of Analog Youth. So Analog Youth is going to be just a generic two-cost digging tool to try to look for the Digimon that we want and add it into our hand. But the important thing about Analog Youth is we get to trash the rest of the cards, which because we're purple, we like things in our trash anyway. Then he also has a pretty decent all turns ability where if our level 5 or higher with a Digivolution source is deleted, we at least get to gain a memory and hatch another egg to try to reset as quickly as we possibly can to continue the aggression and pressure. And then when it comes to the deck's options, I'm going to be running four copies of Wisdom Training. So Wisdom Training is just one of the best consistency tools in the game just because of how cheap it is and the fact that we get to look for any purple card and add it into our hand. The rest will go to the bottom and its main ability of delay is going to be really relevant on reducing the cost of our Digivolutions so that way we can make our plays even more powerful, especially since we have a whole bunch of different ways to be able to gain that extra memory when we're digivolving anyway. Then uh, the only other option I'm going to be running is two copies of Mist Memory Boost. This doesn't necessarily have to be Mist Memory Boost and it is kind of a tech or flex spot. You could even just run Purple Memory Boost if you wanted to. The whole idea is just this is another consistency tool to help uh, set up our trash, dig through our deck, and be able to gain uh, some extra memory at a later turn. But that's pretty much it for the main deck, and we do have a whole bunch of other tech and tools that we could think about incorporating into the deck to customize it and make it your own based on the cards you have access to and what you feel like you want to be utilizing. 
And then the crazy thing is that this deck actually does have some legs with some decent uh, future support and upgrades uh, coming from some of the sets that are going to be coming out preceding BT14. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below. And down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link. So when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook. So when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu. So giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there. And I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.